The game is on the line right now. And there's no wonder that nobody trusts them. Throw a little vodka in there, it'd been a lot better. But honestly, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna smile. I understand their tradition, I understand the helmet and the logo, but we got a logo too. There goes the cheetah, Tyreek Hill! Where's that sooner magic now, baby? Dude, you, you, you're, you're, you got your intro and all that fun jazz? Yeah, kind of. I mean, like, you know, I've been working on an intro, and nothing consistent though. It's obviously, all right, so I'll give you like a test one because I haven't like practiced at all, but I yeah, always yeah. forget until this one. But I want to start off like kind of like almost like a Colin Coward where it's like, and you know, welcome back everyone. We're live here from the Probs cast. Make sure you like and subscribe. You're watching on YouTube. If not, um, you're just doing audio. Make sure you follow on Spotify, uh, give a five star rating, and uh, from there, you know. I, I kind of want to make it mesh a little bit more, if that makes sense. I dig it, bro. I dig it. I, that that that's absolutely. I think you're you're, you're definitely on something there, and that fits your character. Like, let's face it. Uh, I, I'm I'm a loud bearded mess half the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like to I like to make it fun. Uh, I I feel like the amount of research and work that I put in does show right in the show. But your delivery. Your delivery is pretty, uh, pretty smooth, pretty simple. I sound like a crazy yeah. Dude. I just need it to be a flow, you know. You know the the, the most difficult yeah, so, part. Yeah. The most difficult part to me, and that's what I try to find a way to work around is like you know the the long pauses and silences. Like when you're watching a show, you can tell sometimes when when it just it's not flowing very well. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but I, I appreciate what you do. Uh, I mean, this is this is your show. This is your gig. You do your thing. Well, Fire I, you everybody. had me on yours. It only makes sense that you know we we make this happen, man. And, and it was it was awesome going to your show. And what's crazy is like you know I, I listened to your show a little bit beforehand, um, but after I went on your podcast, okay, I'll, like like to this like for an example, like Twitter can be kind of deceiving. You know, I yeah, yeah. I know a lot. I know a lot about Oklahoma State. But I, I sit there a lot, and I and I have a lot of alumni or whatever, and they'll be like, "Hey, do you remember so and so from 1962?" And I'm like, "Dude, no, I, I have no clue." But like, since I have so many Twitter followers, like people think that I know that kind of stuff. And, and I have a lot of, I think every guy has a lot of dumbass knowledge on sports, like certain things that you could just regurgitate off the top of your head. Um, however, like being OK State probs, man, a lot of people they just expect you know to remember, you know, their their cousins, friends daughter-in-law's second removed cousin and i'm like dude i'm like no i start like <laughs> looking up facts i and i'm always terrified they're gonna ask me in person because man if i could do it online i kind of bs not that i'm trying to bullshit anyone but it's like you know i, I definitely want to come off knowledgeable and and you know it's obviously opens gates as well to learn things like that and and i think before me whoever ran okay state props he informed me a lot and, and i hope that i do the same for other people if that makes sense yeah, absolutely, man. Well, and dude, you, you you can look across the landscape right now, right? It's a perfect example. I almost feel bad that everybody keeps laying into the dude, but Tony Altimore, that that dude spent 31, 32 years, right, getting in the game and being involved and, and, and growing some, some quote-unquote sources. And then he takes his whatever, I don't know how, 30,000 30, followers, subscribers, whatever you want to call it, and he leads them on this journey that – Part of us, right, that are taught that we're talking about Colorado and Arizona a long time ago, we're the Big 12 and on, and we don't know what we're talking about, and we don't have any sources, and we're just this and that and the other. And now he looks like a complete sham of a dude. Like, I feel almost bad that he took his 30 years of credibility and he slammed it up against the wall. For what? Like, if, if you have that many resources, there is no way you can physically possibly tell me he didn't know what was going on. So, okay. yeah, in this game, man, delivery matters, right? Your, your yeah. accessibility matters, you know, all of that stuff matters. But to me, and we've talked about this, at the end of the day, the most important thing is credibility. We're all going to be wrong sometimes, bro. Like, you know the drill. Sometimes we forget a player, forget a number, forget a stat. It happens. But it's one thing to be wrong and, and, and be able to say, hey, I screwed up, right? Here's where I can grow. Here's where I can get better. It's another thing to double, triple, quadruple down on it when you know good and daggone well you're BSing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, a lot of these, these, especially with social media, people get these platforms and, and they don't have to do a whole lot of research just to put information out. And 
Um, you know, a prime example right now is this conference realignment stuff. Uh, for example, my girlfriend goes to F or went to FSU. And so nice. they're, they're like, yeah, prime time, number one conversation. Cause they're, they're the biggest brand about to make a switch and we all know it's going to happen. And, yeah. and, you know, when I, when I talk to her, she, she'll send me certain tweets or whatever. And, and, you know, I'm not big on the ACC side of Twitter, let alone FSU. And she's like, is this person credible? Is this person credible? And I was like, Hey, you're in this weird spot that Oklahoma state was kind of in like two years ago where like, you know, I was running, that was right whenever I started OK state probs and yeah. Texas. Now you decided to make the switch and and you see all these stories. And you're like, okay, Oklahoma state might go to the sec, the big 10, the whatever. And I was like, ultimately don't believe everything that you find. And if you do want to follow a person like such as like Brett McMurphy, he's great guy to follow for that kind of information. He's not just going to yeah. put things out off the top of his head. And, and I think that's what it's kind of become is, is you, you're forced to do research and conflict realignment is like the number one example. Yeah, no, I, I completely, completely agree. And my thing from that standpoint is it doesn't take a crap ton. You don't need an overabundance of sources to be able to look at common sense, right? It was common sense that after UCLA and USC were leaving, that the financial side of the gain for the Pac-12 was not going to be worth the, the squeeze. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there was no metric out there other than people like Tony Altmore and John Cazano and the Monty Show. There was Those were the only people pumping these crazy numbers. Yeah. That was it. Everybody no, else from sea to shining sea was like, that yeah, doesn't look good. Like, you I, know, I, you know, I it's, just, oh, it's frustrating. Yeah, it's frustrating. It's great. You, you could talk all day about conference realignment, and, and I absolutely love it. it was, and by the way, I want to mention this. Having you on the podcast with your full setup and your camera and everything, I wouldn't invest it in a camera. It's got a new microphone, right? I don't, I don't have the full setup you have. But, man, whenever I've had on, like, uh, and I'll pick on them, like Alan Bowman or Trayson Wallace. Mason Rudolph did his podcast outside. I'm not saying that they need to invest in a microphone or a camera, <laughs> but I just know this is going to look a hell of a lot better on YouTube and sound a lot better too. So I appreciate you for that. But um, yeah, whenever it comes to the conference realignment and all that, one of the, the crappiest things, and I, and I tweeted it from my personal account, and I was kind of vague on purpose, but the, my source that told me about Colorado, which I don't talk to him very often, he was like, hey, Colorado is going to move this week. I was like, all right. Well, then right after that, I, I posted on social media off my personal. I was like, hey, I know Colorado is crazy, but the same source that just told me that told me another school is supposed to, and it's going to surprise you. And I was honest in that because he told me Oregon State was going to make the move by Friday. And so, like, it, not saying that, you know, I, I didn't want to put oh, Oregon State, Big 12 is going to happen, right? Because it obviously yeah. didn't. But they're right. just like so much going on. And I feel like the only people who know what's going on are the people – that are, are truly involved. I, I even texted Trayson whenever Colorado, yeah. I was like, do y'all know about this kind of stuff? And he's like, Gundy did for sure. But right. yeah, outside yeah, yeah. of that, right. it's like, who, who are we to, to know any information that, that's out there, you know? Well, and, and, and like you said, you brought up an interesting point, right? Whenever you do have sources, you got to walk the fine line of putting stuff out, but also not undermining, you know, the person that's giving you the information because it, again, common sense. If you put stuff out that isn't supposed to be out yet, right, it hurts you, in my personal opinion, unless it's something that's directly beneficial to the university, Oklahoma State, the conference, whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah, man, it, it is a wild ride. Um, I think I think anybody that studies the game with – you don't even have to have a fully functional – you can have an OU-level – fan's brain and still be able to comprehend that the Pac-12 was not going to be in a good spot. Like that's it, it, it just, you tell your kids all the time when they're young, if you touch the stove, you're probably going to learn. You play stupid yeah. games, you win stupid prizes. And the Pac-12 has been doing nothing but dipping the claw of stupidity out there for months. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I think it's crazy. I have friends on the West coast and man, like, they, they they were in disbelief that this was going to occur all throughout this year, um, especially whenever I was working at NASCAR in Daytona Beach. You know, they, they pulled people from all over the earth. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, man, they, I was texting them because they started asking me questions about what was going to happen to their conference. And I was like, dude, 
I don't, I know about as much as you do. I could have told you about Colorado two days ago, but like, you know, and, and I think it's a very few minority that realized that Colorado was okay. Yeah. They, they sucked since they got in back to it. They, they lost what every single game that they lost last year was by a margin of 29 points or more. I mean, they, they're terrible. This move has nothing to do with what no. they've been doing the last 10 years. Nothing. And their their biggest draw was Deion Sanders as well. You know, people, I, I'm excited to watch it. I yeah, am, and I'm, so I'm, is everybody else in the country, buddy. I don't care what anybody says. Whether Colorado's good, bad, crap, doesn't matter. People all across America will be watching Big 12 games this year and next year more than ever, right? Uh, yeah. ACC, ACC people are going to be interested because maybe it's a slight possibility, okay? But there is still yet a slight possibility that there's some ACC schools that end up in the Big 12, right? I don't care yeah, how small absolutely. I don't care how small it is. It's a possibility that adds eyeballs. Dion adds eyeballs. The Pac-12, you know they're going to be more interested in the Big 12 this year because every single game that we lose, they're going to take that opportunity to throw shade. So they're going to be more invested. The only and big the Big Ten needs to be invested because TCU proved last year that we are as good at the top as everybody else that you have, including Ohio State, and we proved it. TCU proved it. Now, did we get drugged through the mud in the national title game? Yeah, right? Okay, again, yeah. so if you want to tell me that we're miles away from the SEC, cool. I buy it. I believe it. I'm down with it. I get it. But if you want to tell me we're the same distance from the Big Ten, I'd say you're higher than a drafts for JJ. It makes no sense. I completely. Yeah. And so I had Greg Swain on. Um, I know. Look at you. Look at you. Yeah. No, he, he's a really good guy. And, and, you know, a lot of people hate on him. And and I think that, you know, he's a little bit older, so things are different. But um, one of the, like, the, the big things that he brought to my attention that I thought was really interesting, he's like, you know, why why does the Big Ten have this this – the, the most massive deal. And it's it's because their alumni bases are so huge. Like, oh, oh, you and Texas talk about, oh, well, we're just good enough to get the offer from the SEC. And it's like, well, no, right. Texas A&M did as well. And Texas A&M, granted of, of how much they recruit and everything like that, the big draw is, is their their fan base. And, and so Brett Yormark is smart enough to say, hey, I'm going to go and get UCF, which is massive fan base. BYU, massive fan base. And then Houston is a huge market, as well as uh, Cincinnati. Um, apparently they have one too, which I, I didn't know that, but apparently they do. And so, you know, the, the big 10, uh, to my point was no one cares about watching Rutgers football, but ultimately, you know, they have this massive draw for media and, and that's kind of what it turned into, which sucks. And I think a lot more people would rather watch, you know, uh, Ohio state and Oregon or, or wh whatever it may be. But a lot of these, these big schools that have a power five program are getting brought in not just off of, you know, looks and uh, how attractive they are, but it's, it's basically because it gets the media right deals up, which yeah. everyone wants the, the big checks, which makes this, it makes sense. I'm not saying it doesn't, you know? No, no, you're, dude, you're, you're spot on. Like, I, I understand that, that you <laughs> definitely get it. So hold on. Can, can I, can I at least ask you, give us a little bit of an extra insight. I watched your episode with Alan Bowman. Phenomenal job, brother. Good job. Watched some of the episode with Trayson. Dude, like, what is the pull that that you're that you're getting right from, from Trayson? Obviously, we talk to some of the same people and we we go through yeah. some of the same kind of lenses, but I'm not I'm not naive enough to believe that I have uh any any kind of the reach that you do. So whenever you had the opportunity to to get with Alan and Trayson. What was the biggest thing, in your opinion, you were trying to get out of it? Um, well, okay, so the the, the reason I, I I guess well, okay, so like the reason uh, I can get like guys like Trayson on, for example, is like I knew Trayson for years. You know, uh, he lives across the street from one of my good friends, uh, Brooke Thomas. Actually, she was my first episode ever, um, oh, nice. and so so yeah, so I developed those connections really well. Uh, Brooke's out in California. She told me she can't do the podcast. So shout out to Brooke Thomas. But um, yeah, so uh, having them on, I mean, what I ultimately tell every athlete that comes on is like, this is a platform for you. You know, if you have anything you want to say, say it. If you don't, that's fine. But ultimately, I just want to talk about you and Oklahoma State football and like the biggest headlines in college football right now. 
Um, it was really cool having Allen on. And and a lot of these players, which I'm not going to call out, but like, man, they'll give me like, like coaching answers. Like, I'll be like, Hey man, uh, you know, what, what's going on, uh, with, with the team right now. And they're like, Oh man, you know, it's looking like a good season where we're going to make a good run at it. And, uh, you know, we're going to do the best we can go pokes, which is awesome. Don't get me wrong. That's all you want to share. Fine. But at the same time, tell me about, you know, some, some, something going on that we don't know. Tell me about, uh, you knew Colorado was coming and, and, and the people should know this or, or whatever it may be. Cause a lot of the answers they give are super coach oriented, but Alan Bowman, he gave me a lot of great information, you know, and I had heard things about him that, you know, a couple of the players didn't like him whenever he first came in, which I don't know how true that is. Um, but then whenever I talked to him and then I talked to Trayson about him beforehand, Trayson told me everyone liked him and that everyone gets along with him. And how could you not? I mean, he was asking me questions on my own podcast about NASCAR. I mean, he was a hell of a dude, you know? Oh, no, man. I, that's what I'm saying. That's awesome. I, I I know you holler at me sometimes when I get some some, some people on, but I mean, it, it was impressive. It, it was fun. Um, you know, the connection that Trayson has, right? Me and you talked about this before. I think legacy recruiting is massive for Oklahoma State. It should be massive for Oklahoma State. When you see Rylan McCorders on the field, it should matter. When you see Elijah Wright on the field, right? All of that stuff. JW being on staff. And uh, Greg Richmond being on staff. That stuff to me is vital for Oklahoma State because should we recruit better? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But, but regardless, whenever we bring guys in like that, it, I think it does give us the, the ability to, to prove that in the transfer game, Oklahoma State's a contender. We were doing it before most people, right? You remember that? We were yeah. we were bringing on we were bringing on some uh, Tyler Patman was one and then we had another one right after back to back um, uh, cornerbacks that were transfers yeah and they what, both Christian Holmes? well Christian yeah. Holmes was was a, a lot way better. out of line yeah I was trying to, I was trying to go through my head on who it was but dude they both went to the NFL they both had pretty pretty successful careers the other guy it makes me mad that I can't remember his name. He played for the, the Jaguars, and he had, he had quite a few uh, uh, picks very early on. But anyways, the transfer market for us is a little bit different. We know that. We get it. I don't think it's as hard as people want to want to put out there to get guys to still order. But, dude, nonetheless, man, when you have people like Alan Bowman, it's going, it's going to be infectious. You and I both know. Yeah, yeah. They knew. The coaching staff knew they had some problems internally including with themselves. But we also know that they have had that come to Jesus meeting. They have improved things. Communication is better. The discipline is better. The understanding of the accountability and what we need to bring to the table every single day. It is significantly different than last year. It really is. The guys have bought into this. We're going to punch you in the flip and throat repeatedly mentality. I cannot wait to play K-State. Do I think it's a W? No, I don't. But I do think it'll be a slugfest, and I do think that we'll have enough retaliation in there that they will feel every minute they're on the field. Yeah, I I, I think just about any game is winnable. Um, actually, for all my listeners, you'll, you'll actually kind of laugh at this. So uh, I, I have four season tickets. Um, I bought a set yesterday uh, because uh, post the purpose, I, I've never accepted any money from them. Um, I've, I've always said I just wanted to go directly to the athletes. Uh, right. But one of the things that I said was, you know, if, if I'm going to do all the social media marketing for you, all one thing I want is tickets to games. And so they told me to go ahead and buy the tickets maybe a month ago. And I, uh, uh, I, I bought some yesterday. And then I got an email this morning right before I sent the reimbursement check of them saying, hey, we're just going to gift you these two extra. So if anyone needs tickets, by the way, Hit me up. I got two. They're both separate from each other. I can't make the first. I can't make any games until after the K State game, unfortunately, because I'm in the DFW area. Uh, oh, but, great. We have we have the same schedule. I yeah, exactly. It's tough. I won't be available for the first half. Hey, bro, are you going to the Houston game? I, I yeah, I will be going to the Houston game, which I'm super amped up. Yeah, my aunt lives down in Katy, so I'm gonna. I have a place to stay. And actually, post the purpose of doing an event, which I I don't know if I'm supposed to say. I'm assuming I can. I don't know. But I don't know how public it is. Uh, but yeah, I'll be down there. I'm super amped up for that. But uh, to, to the original point is like, 
our schedule kind of sucks. And like, whenever I was talking to uh, one of my friends, I mean, it depends on how you look at it, man. I'm a betting man. No, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, (laughs) it's awesome for Oklahoma State. If you're you're an idiot if you're not taking the what six and a half over. Yes, like that. Yes, that's 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 called free money. That if you want to invest, yeah, like that. Dan Pelosi will be investing in that soon because I know she's a great inside trader. Not that this is political or anything, but yeah, she she's she's just put a hundred grand in that for sure. Oh, dude, um, I love you. That's that's great. But, but man, it kind of sucks being in the DFW area because, like, although yeah, our, our schedule would be tougher playing all the Texas schools. It's like, dude, like we don't even get the University of Texas, who we normally beat the hell out of every year. I'm I'm surprised you and Mark and, and the scheduling committee uh, help them avoid that bullet. But, I mean, the, the best way that I can do it where I, I can at least sip on the orange Kool-Aid and, and believe the, the reason is, is because, you know, who has the weakest schedule in the SEC? Is it Georgia? Yeah. All right, before that, it was Alabama. I'm not saying that they're trying to help us win a national championship. All I'm saying is that, like, they typically make the schedule easier for the ones they want to win. Yeah, man. And it's I... not – it's not a... – I'm just saying. Like, I love it. But, dude, whenever I get down to Houston, we're going to have to link up. I've got a dinner plan um, with several uh, several people that are connected to O-State. You'll, you'll have a blast. I promise you. I promise you. Okay, promise yeah, you. Promise I mean, you. I'm down for that, man. You know, like I said, I work a day job, and, and I love doing this the best that I can. Um, yeah, the, the Houston game ought to be fun. Their fans are like weird on social media they're they're almost non-existent and the ones that i've met this one guy said yes. ranking the best college towns in the big 12 he ranked houston number one and like god it was like lawrence kansas last but i just responded and was like <laughs> just tell us you hate small towns like, it, like <laughs> but he, he's like well they're always in crappy cities i'm like is it a city like most of these ones you're like but who by the way if you get off of houston's campus you're in the ghetto like it, it's it's gross, and and I I think that there's a market for these big city teams. I'm not taking anything away from it. Houston yeah, would be yeah. fun if you play your cards right, but I mean like uh, college towns. It, there's a big difference between college towns and cities with a college. In it. You know, a city with a college uh, and it it could survive without the college. The college town. What's Stillwater, Oklahoma, without Oklahoma State? You know, um, it's, it's a, a, fan, a fancy version of Perkins. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I it's it. Not, not for me. That's for sure. And and I I chose Oklahoma State a lot because I love the college town. But yeah, I, I a lot of those fans are, are are a little bit a little bit off beat. And and I think Oklahoma State gets to go to a lot of places. We get to go to Houston. Uh, we play all the newcomers. We get to go to Orlando, um, yeah. which I was hyped about while I was living in Florida. Now, obviously, I don't live there. I can only take so many days off, man. I I can't keep telling them that I'm leaving work early to get a. Uh, an early game but yeah I'm, I'm hyped about the season um from from my perspective because i should be a lot of great wins um i i yeah. I, I don't want to jinx anything so i'm not gonna go further but yeah I, I i think that the season coming up i'm I'm not ultimately concerned about the opponents that we play um but yeah i, I think it's gonna be a hell of a season i think that you know what, what we have in front of us this is like just caked up for mike gundy to do his thing and, and, you know, it, I, I think that everything's going to kind of fall into place, if that makes sense. No, I, dude, I, you know, I, I, I've i covered it, you know, probably ad nauseum. I just, I, I, I'll say it for you. This is probably the most excited I have been for a season since 20, what was that, 2018? Right, yeah, 2018. I was really hyped. Yeah, I thought yeah. I thought Mason Rudolph was finally going to get a hold of some Baker Mayfield. It just didn't happen. But yeah, ten win, ten win plus season. It was fun, but it just, yeah, man. I, I felt like that was that was a year that, that on paper we were better than most most teams in the league, and it just it didn't work out. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, having a two deep on the offensive line for the first time in like seven years. That's gonna that's gonna help. We're, yeah, we're I, I loaded. Familiar. We're loaded at running back. I, I love Dom. You love Dom. He should not have been the guy. I'll say it yeah. right till I'm blue in the face. Right now, it looks like I'm red in the face. I look like I look like Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer right now. But it's just, yeah, man. I, I'll say it till, till I'm blue in the face. I think that's exactly yeah, I, what, what we can what we can achieve. 
Well, it's, I mean, Gundy loves running that air raid offense, and you know we're getting what is is Brennan Presley a junior now? The junior. Yes. And no more air raid, bro. Come on now. I love the air raid. I, I love it. it. It's it's I mean, gone. It is. Yeah. I mean, we're I, still gonna run some spread sets and stuff like that, but right now, like the the whole spring, it was install, right? New defense, new offensive install. And it was all two hole, four hole, three hole, shove it down your throat, play smash mouth, get that physicality in. And we managed to stay pretty daggone healthy through spring, right? I'll knock on wood because we're, we're, we're yeah, just now into, into fall camp. Um, but yeah, man, like I just, the schedule sets up well. The, the, the team right now sets up well. The running back room is going to surprise people. Elijah Collins is having a Jalen Warren level spring, right? He just, he has. We know what Jaden Nixon can do. He's a home run threat every time he touches the ball. Ollie Gordon's probably going to be a guy, the guy, an NFL style guy. If we can run the ball for over 4.6 yards of carry, which I would bet my daggone house on, we win more than 10 games, buddy. We just yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. And, I don't know. It, just, it 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 seems like when the chip, it, it's almost like falling into place a little too too easy. Because it like okay, let's say for example the 2021 season, no one was expecting us to make the conference championship game and, and things like. That. And not a lot of times people are, but right. with this much hate against Gundy, it's almost like he like thrives in these situations. Does that make sense, dude? He 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 did, and I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you said that, bro. You know, you know, you were there when I was getting slammed for putting some stuff out there. And I, all I was saying back then was some of this stuff needs to get out because we're never going to change anything if nobody ever knows any, any of this stuff is happening. So yeah. I think that some of that stuff getting out did get to Gundy. It did give Gundy a little bit more of a rejuvenated, reinvigorated type of feel, right? I do feel like Gundy's in that, okay. Okay, you want to see mode? And that's what we yeah. need. We need yeah, the I'm Gundy sorry. all gas, no breaks. If you go look at when he was an offensive coordinator under Les Miles, we were running fakes and double reverses, and we did crazy stuff, right? He was very innovative. He Everybody called Les the Mad Hatter, but people tend to forget that was Gundy's offense. And then yeah. that, that was the offense he ran. He didn't quite have the talent to pull it off. Then we figured out, right, thanks to people like Dana Holgerson, we don't have the offensive line to continue to try to play the football we're, we're going to play now. Right now, right here, this is the brand of football Mike Gundy's always wanted. He has said a thousand times he had the best job in the world because all he had to do was hand the ball off to Barry and Thurman and watch, right? Yeah. yeah. So he's always he, he He loved when we could utilize Tyree Kill, Chris Carson, Justin Hill, Chuba Hubbard, Jalen Warren, all the way back to Kendall Hunter, Dontrell Savage, Ketosin. He thrived when we had a good running game, but we didn't have uh, all yeah. the talent. Now we have all the talent. I think a lot more is on the line than, than people realize. Maybe it's like a more subtle thing, but like people, you'll you'll get the casual fan that that argue on social media. It's like, oh, everyone from Oklahoma State got poached. And it's like, but not really. Oh, I mean, yeah. we retained every single player that we wanted, and the rest of them. What it's some weird more, number, yeah. like ninety. 97% of players who enter the portal don't find a new home or like they don't find a power five home or something like that. And I, it would blows my mind, but you, you see the successes of, of what all of Lincoln Riley's quarterbacks, including Caleb Williams. And people refer to that a lot or Joe Burrow. Um, but they don't think about the slot receiver from Oklahoma state that transferred um, that didn't make it very well, you know, and, yeah. and, and it's a shame. I mean, I want every athlete to do well. Um, especially if they're wearing an Oklahoma State, you know, America's brightest orange. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, there, there's a lot of chips on the table that I guess people are kind of overlooking, which it just kind of blows my mind because unless you just don't watch college football at all, it's like, why would you ever doubt Mike Gundy, you know? Man, when his back's against the wall, he's got a pretty good track record. Like, that, the, there's, there is some things that you can – you can pick on Gundy for a little bit, right? But there's also some things that are just a masterful job that, that he's got. And I'm actually glad. See, this is why you're so good at this job, my guy, right? Your segue game is on point. You brought up some of the guys that we lost, right? 
here the yeah. perception, the perception when we lose 20, 21 guys or 18 guys, 19 guys, whatever it is, none of it mattered because the minute you heard Spencer Sanders, right, from a national perspective, Spencer Sanders is gone, right? Mason Cobb is gone. James Taylor II went pro. Tyler Lacey went pro. When you look at all that, Jabbar Muhammad goes to Washington. This is what people think of. And then they completely, completely forget that we brought in somebody like Justin Wright, right? Who had yeah. over 200 some odd tackles in two years. Is that the kid and out of Tulsa? Yeah, bro. And then Justin Goodlow, yeah. the defensive end out of Tulsa, that was upgraded to a four star after he went to Tulsa. Like, yeah, man, pe people are just undervaluing what we have. You and I both know this is the deepest safety room that has ever come through Stillwater America. Point blank, period. I, it, it just, it is. It's a fact. It's a factual statement. To watch this defense, dude, we've got linebackers, or, or sorry, safeties that are the size of linebackers that run yeah. four, 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 fives. Like, yeah, even, um, even when we make mistakes, bro, we're going to make mistakes at 200 miles an hour. We're going to have a yeah, bunch, it, a bunch of deep, Calvin Dunders just that. flying all over. And, and I love it. You know, I, I don't know if you play uh, video games. I'm not much of a video game guy myself, but I did pay this kid in Michigan like 80 bucks to modify my 360, and he got me the new college football game, right? Wow. All updated uniforms, everything. It's called college football revamp for anyone listening. That man, I it's got all, Dude, it's ridiculous. That, I'm, and I'm buying a PC not only for, you know, my podcasting and everything Damn. like that, but also – because it's a little bit more updated on there. And, man, it, it, it's a blast. I'm, I'm not a big video game guy. Right? I'm, I'm, I turned 26 in a week, and, and I've, I've kind of floated away from that, getting a daily job and kind of growing up. But, man, I, playing it, I feel like I learned more, number one, because there, there's so yes. many players in the NCAA. And so I learned more, and I can play around with it. And, man, it, it's, it's almost like playing a real-life highlight reel. Where like you know I got Kendall Daniels on one side, I'm running a three three five, and Brian Nordo. I will say this: I, I did delete Trace Ford from the game. Um, this it, I'd like to say I was intoxicated. I actually would like to double down now and say that I made that decision out of spite, and I, I believe in it, man. I, I there's certain players I don't even want them anymore. Yeah, you know, I'll keep a couple players. Hey, Mason Cobb, you know I get it. He wants to go to USC. I'm not a fan of that, but ultimately it's like you know. I, he's going to help the team out. And I don't know, it's, it's way to pass the uh, time and everything like that. I know you're not a big video game guy, but I'd love to help you out sometime. Well, no, 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 that, that, that's the only thing. NCAA football, uh, I got, I got lost. I got lost in it, dude. And I did use it as a tool. I think most people did. Whenever I'd be playing the game with my son, so obviously, yeah, he, he didn't love it all the time. Blame but it I on your son, yeah. I would pause the game, right? And I'd be like, look, dude, that's cover three defense. What is this free yeah. safety looking at? Like, is he looking at the quarters coverage? Who has the flat? Who, and so I would make him diagnose, okay, that guy has the flat. That guy's got to follow yeah. the drag route. And I was yeah, teaching, and this, is, this is the route concepts you're looking at. This is why. This is where you want your linebackers. But it's applicable, right? It's, it, the, as yeah. he gets into the game of, of football on the field, he's like, oh, crap. This is a cover too. I have to go that way. It makes it make more sense. So, yeah, bro, I got lost for hours. I'd stay up till four, four in the flipping morning like a child playing NCAA. Was the last one was 2014? 2014, yeah. But me and my son got it in like 2016 or 17. Dude, hours and hours and hours. I was in the oil field, thankfully. So I kind of got to yeah. dictate some of my schedule. But I'd be lying to you if I didn't maybe – Push off a job or two because I was stuck building a roster and recruiting. No, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, man. I mean, it's, it's a hell of a game. I haven't played it since it last got released, but man, this kid was like 80 bucks and I'll just do it for you. And I was like, I was sign my ass up. And, you know, yeah. I, 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 I like, you know, just what you, to your point, man, like there's just, there's certain things. And, and I'm not trying to say all my knowledge comes from an Xbox, but like there's just certain things that it, it kind of reminds you of. And, and, and the players that did stay, the players that left. And, and you know, it's, it's just a great reminder in general. And it's, man, to, to pass uh, time during this offseason, God bless, man. It, this offseason feels like it's one of the longest ones in a while. And, and I'm oh, just excited. It's been great, though, back. man. This offseason has been spectacular. Yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. it. And I love it. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for every player that, that we have. I'm super excited for Alan Bowman. You know, um, obviously, we have the last bedlam. 
Um, I'm actually going, my, my girlfriend works for Texas A&M now and uh, man, uh, I get to go to a game there, uh, right, right, Alabama, uh, and Texas A&M. So that'll be like a packed house. I'm going to BYU right. in Arkansas. I'm, I'm hitting right. a lot of different games this year to, you know, diversify my portfolio, but man, it, it's going to be one hell of a season. I think so. I think all, all around the big 12, man, you, you mentioned Texas, right? I hate to admit it, but I think they actually will be pretty good finally. So, uh, well, once you get the quarterback and the coach right, it's not too, you know, that that's always what I feel like have been the problem. Um, the same goes for OU, you know, not not to give them airtime or anything, but, like, I don't think they got the coach right, and they definitely don't have a quarterback worse than anything that Oklahoma State has. And, you know, I, I, I think that people can actually believe in Texas now, I'm not saying that they're back or anything like wild like that. But, I mean, Quinn Ewers, yeah, he sucked versus Oklahoma State. But outside of that, I mean, dude, he was the highest recruited – uh, higher, yeah, 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 the highest recruited high school recruit. He played down the street, man. It sounded like terror. Yeah, yeah like it, it's ridiculous. And and I think Sark is a badass coach. And you know, I, I I'm gonna have Kyle Umlong on the show here soon. We're gonna talk. I actually have his book. A shout out to him, 101 Aggie Facts. Okay. I don't know if you've ever seen All right. That. All right. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty fun book. Um, okay. Yeah, I went to follow one of those with my girlfriend. I worked at Texas A&M. She never even really like got delved into what type of cult they are. Um, but yeah, with, with Sark, man, I, I think he's a hell of a dude. I think that it, it's possible they make the conference championship. It doesn't look good for the big 12 in our image. If, it, if they do same goes for Colorado wins the pack, the pac 12. Um, but I, I don't think anything's going to change with OU. I think they're going to be a six and seven, seven and six ball club. Um, and, dude, they, and they, have a, they have a, they have a pretty, uh, I would say they have the second easiest schedule in the conference. That their schedule yeah. should keep them afloat. Uh, man, I, I I got nothing good to say about him. So I mean, six and seven is the best I can probably say about him. All right, um, all right. But, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Ultimately, I, I feel like you know, like we've been saying, I think the late, the the road is paved for Oklahoma State to make a, a run at it. And you know, I think you do a great job at your podcast. Um, I'm, I've been working, I'm training for this construction job, and so I've been doing a lot of warehouse work. And man, I'll keep my one of my AirPods in and listen to your podcast as well as like feels like 45 and, and things like that. And you know, I think Oklahoma State does really well with guys like you or feels like 45 podcast guys, where it kind of gets the name out there. And, and you know, I just want to make sure that you know that I appreciate you and your podcast. Well, hell yeah, brother, man. I, I, I didn't. So, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for that. I man, listened to it a lot. Drill. I promise. You know, the drill, man, this is see the, the difference here, you know, and people do ask me, this is what I do. This right here. This is all I do. I coach, I coach basing, uh, pitching for a, a local high school baseball team. Other than that, man, I watch film every single day. I read all of the, all of the articles. I watch all of the podcasts. I watch some of the 365 stuff, John Kurt stuff, uh, Fitzgerald stuff. I watch a little bit of the Pac-12 stuff just because I like laughing, right? I'm a big yeah. fan of a yeah, I'm a big fan of a chuckle. But yeah, yeah man, um you you work your tail off and then also put a considerable amount of time into making this work. So you're throwing me flowers. I got to throw them right back at you because this is all I do and you still are able to you know, work a full-time job and put on a, a really good product, brother. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah. I, I think that, uh, you know, it's going to be a great season. I, I, I hope that I'd go back on your podcast or you'd come back on mine during oh, the yeah. season. And, you know, I, I think it's going to be awesome rooting together. We'll definitely have to link up for some games. Definitely the Houston or if you ever make it up 100%. to Stillwater, whatever it is. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well hey man, if, that, if, man if, I really appreciate if you, you. grow, uh, if you grow a wild hair, and, and you want to end up at the bounce house, I, I've got several tailgates uh, already set up for us. Dude, hey, if you go there, I, I went and toured their campus, uh, or toured their campus. I, w I walked into the stadium because um, it was unlocked, so take that as you will. But, <laughs> man, it, it's a it's a cool stadium. I, it's, it's smaller, don't get me wrong, yeah. but it's a cool stadium. The bounce house, it's made for its bounce, um, right. if anyone didn't know that. Um, and then they have a bar down the street called the bounce house, Man, I went there like Tuesday at like three o'clock, and it was dead. But you, it has all the the fundamentals of being a badass bar. So definitely, definitely go check them out. I promise you, I'm not sponsored yet. So, bro, when's the last time? Oh, you go, you 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 get you, 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 you tripped my trigger. You got me stuttering. I sound like the water boy over here. When's the last time you w went to the Dagon Strip in Stillwater? 
I guess it'd be homecoming last year. Dude, I was so mad. Like, I was so excited. Haven't been back in a couple of years, right? Make, make the make the nine-hour drive. I want to go to the strip. I haven't been to a bar in three you, years. When did you go? Uh, it was, a, I don't know, like a month and a half, two months ago, probably. Oh, you went during the summer? Yeah, yeah. My son had oh, a – we had a couple dead. baseball tournaments. Yeah, dead during the summer. Dead well, no, no, summer. it wasn't I, that. It wasn't that, man. I, 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 the old fogey in me is about to come out. Okay. But I liked the strip when it was a strip bar, 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 bar. That's what it was. Right now it's bull honky bar, right? It's still called Willie's, but half of it looks like it's catering to special education. OU students, right? I, I, I don't get it. You look across the street, the copper penny looks more like the nickel penny now. And then you got all these dumb A restaurants. Oh, I was so mad, bro. I was like, screw this. I'm going to the harbor. And it's called the White Buffalo. I was like, yeah, crazy. yeah. They're super traditional there. They uh yeah, I mean, you know, you got you got Willie's. I know that they they closed the expansion because that's what Pickleman's used to be a part of, um, which kind of sucks because they used to have a better stage, is what I got told. Um yes. super historic yes. though. Um, yeah, so but I'm, I'm glad that it's still standing for sure. But then you got Murphy's and Coney. Did you go to Coney Island? Yeah. They renovated everything. That was my first social media job. I started getting paid for it. Um, I remember, I remember, I remember us talking about that. And that was right around the same time you were doing like the NIL stuff for for Spencer and. um, No, that was. And Brennan and Trace. It was kind of around the same time. Yeah. They, uh. Yeah. Yeah. It was right around. I I pay attention sometimes. I was finally getting paid for a social media, man, which was awesome. Which, by the way, if anyone's listening to this and you've made it through this far, man, def- like my, my DMs are open. Send, send me a shout, man, and, and I, I definitely – I'll wear all – right now I'm wearing Blendville on my roots is Garth Brooks' new bar in Nashville, right? And, like, I could be wearing your stuff. He, he could be wearing your stuff. Man, I'll promote the hell out of that. Everyone – you know, I got a lot of listeners, the whole shebang. So, man, my, my DMs are open. You know, I helped Willie's out a whole lot, right? But I know that they closed down that app. Trust me, I, I got all the Facebook messages and everything like that. Your, and and, your and DMs your are changed open. a little bit. Your DMs are open, and you help Willie's a lot. That that sounds like that sounds that sounds like your typical um, office Steve Carell. That's what she said. Moment. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know what? I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. Actually, see again, this is why you're so good at this, my guy. Your segue game. Um, I'm almost, I'm right there. I'm right on, I'm right on the corner's edge from having a, a thousand, thousand subs on, on YouTube. So shout out to everybody out there that, that that's listening and, and watches a little bit of everything. What's your YouTube called for everyone here? Uh, Locked on Oklahoma State. Obviously on Twitter, uh, at all day, O-State. It's O-State all day, Facebook, O-State all day, Instagram. I keep it pretty simplistic. Uh, but for the thousandth uh, uh, subscriber, I've got a pretty bad A giveaway, and whenever I get it done, so it'll be some custom knives, like Damascus bladed, orange, black. One side will have my logo. The other side will have the Locked On logo, and that'll be part of one of my giveaways. Uh, So, yeah, dude, whenever I get stuff like that linked in and it goes well, I'm I'm absolutely going to throw you into the mix if you don't mind. Yeah, well, once you hit that 1,000 mark on YouTube, you start getting monetized, right? No, well, it, it, the, the way that Locked On has it, it's you have to combine the YouTube numbers basically with with some of the the podcast numbers, and the, the Spotify and all that stuff doing very very well. YouTube, you know, I'm 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 still kind of figuring it out. Uh, I I'd be a liar if I told you I thought I'd be at a thousand all, all, already. To be 100 percent honest with you, I thought it would take a decent amount of time. Obviously, it could go faster. I could be doing better. But I'm learning. I'm upgrading, right? I'm I'm trying to, to 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 figure this out. But I do firmly believe. So we talked about earlier the credibility side of things. I, I think that some of this, you know, Colorado move news, Arizona move news, Big Twelve and non, all all the stuff that went on in the off season, right? I do think that all of that is going to pay off. Um, so yeah, man. I just I, I appreciate the time. Uh, I, I like what you're, yeah. what you're doing. So I think it's a good no, and I appreciate you too, man. Um, good collab, that, good yeah. collab uh, buddy. Great collab. 
Awesome. Well, I appreciate y'all. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow me on Spotify. I don't know, whatever, whatever I'm on. Um, make sure however you're listening to this, go ahead and show some love. Show some love to all day O State, locked on Oklahoma State. And man, I, I we really appreciate y'all. Absolutely, buddy. And uh, yeah, dude, we, we should probably get this to where it's a half ass regular thing, buddy. Yeah, sure. Gotcha, man. The game is on the line right now. There's no wonder that nobody trusts them. Throw a little vodka in there, it'd been a lot better. But honestly, I was just gonna, I'm just gonna smile. I understand their tradition, I understand the helmet and the logo, but we got a logo too.